Island. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's so good to see everybody here this morning and smiling and everything. Healthy, strong, and whole. No sickness and disease in this place. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me just take a minute here. Um, I just feel led to, again to pray for health and healing in bodies today. Amen? Amen. You know, it's kind of funny when you have symptoms, a lot of times you're sitting there saying, well, how can I pray if I have symptoms? Well, I can pray because the Word of God is true, no matter what my circumstance is. Amen? Amen. So let's just take a minute. Heavenly Father, we just come to you again in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that you took sickness and disease on your back so many years ago on that cross. We thank you by your stripes we are healed. We thank you, Father God, that symptoms have to go at the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that you're the same blood that came down. It covers us and it cleanses us from all evil. Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, right now I just take time to just, again, stand in the gap for those that are are suffering those that are, are, are not feeling well. And we just, first of all, we start with the family here at the church. And we just pray right now for Melvin, whose stomach is still hurting him. I speak to that stomach and I say, line up with the Word of God. Line up now with the Word of God. Be whole, be strong, be well. I speak to Karen and her whole family and I say, symptoms leave in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that's ailing, whatever it is that is causing this this dysfunction, I just speak right now. I say clear and wholeness in their chest and in their lungs. I speak to Desiree and to myself, and I say bodies line up with the Word of God. I thank you, Father God, that your power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in our bodies, and it revitalizes us. I speak right now to the missionaries, Dennis and Jeannie, over in Panama, and I say... Whatever that neurotical issue is, I say, be whole in Jesus' name. Be whole in Jesus' name. Pain, leave his legs right now in Jesus' name. Peace, come upon them right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, that you are the God that took us to the place to stand in the gap for those that are hurting. And so, Lord, we don't don't take this lightly, but we take this with the authority that you have given to us. And you, we just declare health and wholeness in our bodies. We speak to my son, Roger, right now, his ankle and his wrist, and we say, be whole in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you, Father God, for that. We speak right now to, to Luke, and we say, cancer, be gone in Jesus' name. Yes. Lord, we thank you that your power is working and, and operating in each of these lives. We thank you for the testimonies that we've gotten that Robert's out of ICU and that he's doing better. Lord, we thank you for that, but we say, body continue to line up with the Word of God. We thank you for the the testimonies that we're getting, but we thank you, Father God, that you're not done. And so we just take our position and we say, we're standing on the wall until we see the fulfillment of what you promised, the wholeness and health in our bodies. Sickness has to leave. Dave and Liz, we speak to your bodies and we say, line up with the word of God in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father God, that we can stand holy, confident, knowing that you are doing a mighty work in our lives. So Lord, we just take that position and we say right now, as people come across our path, we just declare wholeness and health in their bodies. We thank you, Father God, for what you're doing and what you will continue to do. Lord, we do our part. We do our part to position ourselves ready to give out the healing power of Jesus that you have given us, that authority to command sickness to leave. That's what we do. So thank you again for that privilege to be your ambassadors. We thank you for that right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <coughs> amen. Yes. Amen. amen. Mm. Well, as I shared last week, you're probably going to hear me over and over and over, just let you know. Um, this first bit, you're going to hear it over and over this year, because I really think that it's vital that we get it inside of us and that we understand I shared last week, I believe the Lord spoke to me, that this year is a year of the revelation of the breaker and the tipping point. The tipping point will be where your focus is. 
or where you are looking. Whether you are looking at the world, you're going to be broken. But if you look and focus on Jesus, you will experience him as your breaker, breaking down the walls, the challenges, the issues, and the enemies. The question for this year is, where is your focus? Just realize your entire world is at a tipping point. If I knew that my entire world was at a tipping point, I would make sure that everything I could do is I would be lining myself up to make sure I'm tipping in the right direction. Amen? I was talking to somebody this morning, and um, as I was talking to them, they were telling me of, of a situation. I, I, I questioned this, qu this over and over you know, until I got a little bit more clarity. And then I stated, you know, that's the same situation that you had last week. I said, the devil will not change their mode of operation if it works. Amen. You understand? If it's something that's going to keep you on the path that you're on, that the enemy wants you to be on, he's not going to change what he's doing. He's going to continue operating until we get the revelation and say, no, I'm not going to allow myself to go down that road again. Amen. Come on now. We have got to line up with what the word says because you know what? That slope is just so slippery and the things are so loose right now that it's easy to get down at the bottom of the hill where we don't want to be. Yes. So, this word is, I believe, is not just a warning for those so that they can ease back into God. That's not what this was about. This is a declaration that God is positioning you to be your breaker. He is positioning you to break down those things that you said there's no way in the natural that I can get through that. Come on, anybody have some issues in their lives that there is no way that you can see that God, that we can get through this in our own strength? Come on. Let's all say it together. But God. But God. You know, that's the great thing about where we are. Amen? Amen. <laughs> is that we are on the position of the but God. And I want, I want us to each really put that down deep in our hearts today is that we can see every situation, every single circumstance, every single thing that we do not have an understanding how we can get through, but we can understand we have a God that is more than able. He is on the other side of that wall. He knows what's there. He knows what we have to be prepared for to deal with what's on the other side. Come on now. There are always some things that need to be shifted and transformed and, and, and taken out for us to go to the next place where God has us. Amen? A lot of times it's not the fun places to be, though. A lot of times that means leaving the, the comfortable, leaving the things that make us happy in our minds where we are. Oh, I want out of the situation I'm in, yes, but I like this portion of it. Come on now. Don't shout me down because you know I'm talking straight. But the, it's the truth of it. A lot of times we, we don't like the whole situation, but we do like this one little area. God's wanting us to get rid of all of the stuff that's holding us back from here. Amen? Amen. We're going to be looking today at 2 Corinthians 6. So you have your Bibles, you might as well camp out there. We're going to pretty much read that entire chapter. It's a beautiful chapter. <laughs> so if you're there, say amen. Amen. Amen, all three of you. Good. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And it says, for God says, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. That sounds like we should listen, right? Amen. Come on now. I heard the amen. She just got there. For God says, at just the right time, I heard you. Come on. Isn't that a great piece of information? We can just shut the Bible right now and say, you know what? He hears me at the right time. Yes. You know, our right time might not look like what his right time is. Right. But guess what? At just the right time, right. he's going to hear you. At 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2 probably is where I'm at. He started at the middle of the first verse. I apologize. <laughs> For God said, at just the right time I heard you. On the day of salvation I helped you. Come on now, let me, let me just ask you this. Yes. Do, you think that, do you think that Paul is just talking about when we ask Jesus Christ to come into our lives, that day of salvation? Oh, no. No, it's talking about what do you need in your life right now that you need saved from? Exactly. What are the situations that you need salvation from? Come on. Where the kings came against the children of Israel over and over and over, those were days of salvation. Amen? Amen. 
Let's just think about that instead of saying, oh, I had that day of salvation. This doesn't apply to me. No, I, my day of salvation is each and every day. There are many moments of salvation. I'm driving on the roads here in Jamaica, and people drive very... I need salvation on the roads. Come on now. Some of them need salvation just, period. But I mean, I'm just saying, there are things that we need to make sure that we are understanding. On the day of salvation is the days that he helps us. How many people here can say, you know what, God has helped me every single day. Amen. I've seen him break through. I've seen him help me. Amen? Amen. Indeed, the right time is when? Right now. now. Right now. Come on now. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? The, indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. You know, we need to grab hold of that truth because when we understand that today is the day of salvation... And if today is the day of salvation, we know God hears us. Yes. And he's going to come through for us. Amen? Amen. Isn't that exciting? Yes. That's so exciting. <laughs> but as always, God is requiring what? Full surrender and preeminence. That's a big word. Preeminence. That means before everything else, he's over it all. Yes. Preeminence in your life, in your choices, and in your time. You, you hear that last one in your what? Hi, hi. Ah, yeah. And we're not talking about what I have growing outside. <laughs> we're talking, it's not even what you put in rice and peas. It's right. in your time and how you spend your 24 that you get every single day. Right. Past couple of years, we've seen many challenges. Come on, is that correct? Yes. We've seen a lot of frustrating times, some more than others. <clears throat> As fear became the focus and the guiding light in the decisions and the directions. It's the truth of it. But this is not a brand new thing. It's not something that it's like, oh, well, I wonder what we're going to do now. No, this is just a season that we've seen come through over and over. It might not just be COVID that we've had in the past two years. Come on. Right. What is it? It could be an economic collapse. Right. It could be... A new party coming into a place of authority that we don't really like. It could be people that are now in our lives that we're like, oh, I really, they really rubbed me the wrong way. Right? right? There could be a lot of different things, those seasons that cause there to be frustrations. But you know what? God is still saying today is still the day of salvation. Amen. 2 Corinthians 6, 1 and 2, as God's partners, see I started at the beginning now, I just want to give you that preamble there. As God's partners, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. Come on, some bud. Amen. For God says, at just the right time I heard you on the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now today. When, Kyle? Today. Today is the day of salvation. I believe this is a great place to start on this journey. See, we're going to be talking about the tipping point and the breaking for the next several for the next several weeks. But this is an important place to start because we all need to solidify one thing. You ready for it? You ready? It's in verse 1 and it's the very first three words. As God's partners. See, you know what? If we do everything else on our own, we don't have the revelation that we are his partners. So we're going to look at that aspect, that starting point. So I want to ask you guys, what does it mean to be God's partners? It means you don't do things on your own without consulting your partner first. That's good. Working together on the same side. I like that. We both, we both are one. We both are one? Okay. Is that, is that what you said, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Co heirs. Okay. You can always count on the other. Mm. Those are good. You're both responsible. Mm. Right? And along with that, you're both would. Either the consequences or the benefits of decisions made, work that is done or not done. Wow, that's good. I mean, it's not just all good. I wrote this. 
Right. That's very true. <laughs> Most people have a partner. I agree. <laughs> so, just some thoughts that I've come up with. I mean, I love everything you guys have said. Just really great. Um, but as I thought about it, and as I thought about what does it mean to be God's partner, okay? I think a lot of times we, we picture God and being a, his partner is that he gives us what we need. Come on. Right. Well, the Bible says that he'll give me everything that I need. So, you know, as his partner, he gives me what I need. Now, that's one thought process. Um, perhaps it's, well, I'm his partner when it's convenient. Not nobody in here, though. Because we're, <laughs> this is a Sunday morning, we're in church crew. So it's not this crew. Um, perhaps it's, if God really wants me to do something, he would speak to me loudly so I could hear. Come, come on, any, any of those? Why, why are we smiling back there? I'm not going to say who. But anyways, you know, just could be one of those. But this is the one that really hit me whenever, as I was preparing this message, this thought really, really hit me so hard. I think that so many of us think, yes, of course he's my partner. How many people have their hands up on that one? Yes, he's my partner. Yeah, put your hands back down because I don't want you any part of this one. He's my partner. He's just my silent partner. Because he doesn't care about all the ins and outs, all the ups and downs, and all the decisions of my day. It's not true, but let me think about it. Before we do something, y'all can put your heads down so I don't look at your eyeballs. But, I mean... When before we do something, do we really stop and say, God, is this something that you want me to do? <laughs> or is it something that we just go and do, and then we're like, oh, God probably didn't. He wasn't involved in that part of it. <laughs> and that's really where we're going to be looking at. He does care. Paul shares about, he shares with us this one, one verse farther, what he means when he says, God is our partner. So in verse 3, this is what he says. We live in such a way. Kids, you know this verse because this was your kid's corner verse this morning. We live in such a way that no one... What do you mean in such a way? Everything about how I live. This is what it's talking about. We live in such a way that no one will stumble because of us. No one will find fault with our ministry. In everything, in what? In everything. In everything we do, in other words, there's no exemptions, just saying. We show, what, what's that word, show? Show? Show on. Show on. Shows action, right? right? It means it's not just sitting here saying, I'm going to be silent. No, there's action involved. That we are true ministers of God. Here it is. You ready? Hold on to your seat. Buckle in. We patiently endure troubles. And oh my goodness, you didn't just say that, did you? And hardships and calamities of what? Of That's every kind. Right. What does that really mean to us? <clears throat> it means that you and I have a direct role to play in being the breaker and activating the breaker for us and for other people. We have to get through the challenges that are facing us. But we have to get through it with our partnership intact. We have to get through it counting on God to be able to carry us through. Amen? It also means that there is no excuses for not obeying and following God. James 4.17, it says what? <coughs> Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. That's, a, that's one of those words that we're like, oh, I don't like it. That one's going to push over there on that area that we don't want to. But it's the truth. In other words, it's not a mistake. It's not a, oops, I didn't know. We know when God speaks. Come on. We know when God speaks. And it's our responsibility. Say responsibility. responsibility. It's our responsibility to obey. As I started thinking about what does that word responsibility, what does that really look like? And, and as I thought about that in relationship to the tipping point, into today's message, 
I really believe that that word responsibility, we should just break it in two. Our response is yes. Our response is yes to his ability. See, that partnership that comes together, my part is responding, and that's yes. What am I responding to? His ability, which is I am able to do everything that I need to do. Come on now. So what is it? My response ability is yes to his ability. That means whatever direction he wants me to go in, whatever it might look like, whatever he's trying to tell me to do, I just say yes. Okay, now God, what is it you want me to do? Amen? Amen. <laughs> if you don't get anything else, grab responsibility today. Yeah. My response to his ability. Just like sheep know and listen to their shepherd. Over and over in the scriptures, John 10, 5 is actually talking about, talking about sheep. And it says, they won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. That's why it's so important to know the voice of our Lord. Amen? Amen. To hear the key in. Oh, oh, I think I heard his sweet little whisper. I need to run to him to find out what it is he wants me to do today. Yes. Well, what if it hurts? What if he tells me to do something and it just, man, it's hurt, it hurts or it doesn't feel comfortable. And, you know, it doesn't even look like he's involved. I'm just going to let you know. Newsflash, billboards shining up here. It says, look, there is no ignore my command if clause in his word. Oh, let, me, let me say it again over to this place. There is no ignore my word command in. There is no ignore my command if clause in his word. You understand what I'm saying? In other words... I can ignore God's word if this takes place. There is no place like that in the Bible. What he says is what he says. And there is no separating. There's no wiggle room. There's no loophole. There's no government back behind way to get into it. No, this is kingdom. When the king spoke, it's now finished. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Paul was actually addressing that thought process with these next few verses. Ready? Verse 5. We have been beaten. Oh, that sounds rough. Oh, no. There has to be a clause to get out of this if I'm being beaten. No. We've been beaten. Been put in prison. Faced angry mobs. How many people just did that today? No, none of us, right? Praise God. If you've been beaten, it's probably your own fault, little kid. No. <laughs> Anyways, been put in prison, faced angry mobs, worked to exhaustion, endured sleepless nights, and gone without food. We prove ourselves by, the, by our purity, our understanding, our patience, our kindness, by the Holy Spirit within us, and by our sincere, by our sincere love. We must realize when we ask Jesus into our lives, it was not on a contingency basis. As long as everything is good and moving in the way I think that it should, you're in my heart. But the moment that the seas get a little bit rocky, <laughs> you know what? I'm looking for another boat. Because I don't know if I like the boat I'm in. No! We have to, that song that I heard, oh, so many times at all the conventions here in Jamaica. My anchor holds. Yes. Come on, in the midst of the storm, my anchor is holding. Why? Because my anchor is not in anything that's on the ground. My anchor is in the things in heaven. And I want you to think about that. When we are secure and held in the things of heaven, the storm that's below us is not going to buffet us. But see, when we think about that song, my anchor holds we're thinking, oh, it's holding me down into the storm. No, the anchors, we need to think about that. It's holding us into Jesus. So when the storms come, we're above that storm. Come on now. Amen. We're able to be secure in what it is that God is doing. It was stronger. As long as everything is good and moving the way I think it should. No, my relationship and my commitment to him, hello, is stronger then death do us part. Yes. 
Why? Because that covenant that I'm in is stronger than any business relationship. I was talking to, to my wife this week as I was just going over this little portion of it. And that was just over and over. It's stronger than our child and our parent connection. My relationship with God, what he tells me to do is more important and stronger than that. And she said something else. And I'll be honest with you, I tried to try it all morning to remember what was that one key? Because it was like so good. Do you remember what it was? Because we were talking at breakfast and we were just going over. I was like, yeah, it's stronger than this and stronger than that and stronger than this. And Yvonne's like, well, it's done da 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 I'm like, oh, that's so good. I wish I could write it down. It's like, well, don't worry. She'll remember it for me. Anyways. <laughs> when you remember it, I'm sure I'll hear it. There you go. Because it's a covenant connection, and it bridges over feelings. It bridges over thoughts. It bridges over excuses, persecutions, and desires. Why? My relationship with God goes beyond all of those things. It should be the thing that is most important. There's no place in Scripture that says... Once you've been with Jesus so long, you can do everything on your own. Yeah. Just, just letting you know, there's nothing that says that. We still have to get direction. Over and over we see when the children of Israel, they did their own, they, they listened to God, they came out and they did what was they, God was telling them to. And they're like, oh, well we just defeated Jericho, no problem. We're just going to take, you know, we'll only take five, 6,000 guys and we'll go and knock off this next little place. Because it's a little small town. And guess what? They got themselves handed to themselves. They got beat and then sent on their way because they didn't go and ask God what it is that we should do. David, the same thing with him. He heard from God. He would constantly go back to God and say, hey, now how do you want me to do it this way? Do you want me to head on him again? No, no, no. I want you to go around behind him. Oh, okay, go around. Okay, now I've gone head on behind him. Now what do you want me to do? Oh, uh, now I want you to go and um, send half of them to attack straight on and then wait everybody up. You know, there are different strategies for the different moments in our lives. Amen? God's not saying for every five years of good behavior, you get three days to decide everything for yourself. <laughs> that sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? <laughs> Jesus said, I am the same when? Yesterday, yesterday, today. today. And forever, Hebrews 13, 8, we must live like Jesus. We faithfully, verse 7, back to 2 Corinthians 6, for those of you who are wondering. We faithfully preach the truth. God's power is what? Working in us. We use the weapons of righteousness. I want you to grab hold of this for just, I mean, this is so good. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand. In the what hand? I get my right hand up. In the right hand, right? For attack. And the left hand for what? For defense. So if my weapons of righteousness are in my right hand and in my left hand, if I have something in both of my hands, how in the world can I do anything on my own? Because my hands are full, that's right. They cannot do anything on my own because why? They are doing what my partner told me to do. This is what? For my attack. This is for what? My defense. Right. And if there's anything else that I'm doing, if I'm anything else, I can't be trying to tell you something. Let me tell you a secret. You can't tell a secret. Why? Because your hand over here has attack. Your hand over here has defense. And you put your hands like this. What's going on? Nothing for God. Y'all follow? Yeah. We serve God whether people honor. Chris, this is just by the way, it's not my opinion. Verse 8. Verse what? 8. Okay. Hope y'all are getting some. I am. We serve God whether people what? Honor, honor us or despise us. Hello. Whether they what? Slander us or praise us. Hmm, this is pretty good. We are honest. But they call us imposters. We are ignored even though we are well known. We live close to death, but we are still alive. We have been beaten, but we have not been killed. Our hearts ache, but we will always have joy. 
Let me repeat that. Our hearts say, but we'll always have joy. We are poor, but we give spiritual riches to others. We own nothing, but yet we have everything. Okay, see, as we look at these words, as these verses, it looks like, hold it. These are totally opposite. How can you do this? How can we have this? Why? Because their focus was not on the things of this world. Come on now, somebody. Where were their focus? God. Oh, God. Yeah, I might be experiencing this in the moment, but I'm gonna, I know that this is what I'm really experiencing, is your faithfulness. I'm really experiencing your love. I'm really experiencing your joy, even if I'm sad. Come on. <laughs> this is what we will face, but also what we have to empower us and to fill us to obey God's plans and His will. What? Oh, the fact that He brings us joy even in heartache. Yeah. That He brings us honor even when people despise us. We're ignored even though everybody knows us. Sometimes, I remember many, many times, I would walk into a place that everybody knew who I was. Okay? But yet, everybody turned their back on me. And I want to say that because, good, guess what? There's one person in that room that didn't. God, who was my partner, that walks with me through every single thing. He's with me through it. But how often is it that we sit there and say, well, I just feel this way, and because of that, I've got to find somebody that can relate. I need to find somebody that's with me, to support me, to encourage me. Come on. In these next few verses in, the, in this chapter, it says, verse 14, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? Is there, huh? There's no way you can you can't turn on a light switch and say, oh, I've got light and I've got darkness in the same place. It just doesn't happen. Because you can have the shadows, you can have all of this, but the reality is, is where there is light, darkness has to leave. <laughs> Verse 15. What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? So let me ask you, what is God's temple again? You and me are God's temple. For we are the temples of the living God, as God says. I will live in them and walk among them and will be their God and they will be my people. This is what God wants, to be our God, to walk among us. But for Him, <laughs> but for that to happen, we must relinquish control and trust Him to do what He wants, how He wants, and with whom He wants. Amen? Verse 17 goes on, says, Therefore come out from among the unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things, and I will welcome you. I know it's a lot of scripture that we've read this morning. But the reality is, is God has given us a clear-cut path for how He wants us to live our lives. How He wants us to be removed. How He wants us to be fully committed to what it is that He is calling us to. Amen? And to separate our, ourselves from, from the, the filthy things. He says, and when you do that, He's going to do what? What's His part on that? The last four words in that verse were, and I will welcome you. It's all in context. This whole chapter it's, that we've read is all in context, and it's all shouting us to follow God's plan, not our own. Today's takeaway should be, as God's partner, I should be... <coughs> Today say, well, you know what? My whole notes are just now gone. Praise Jesus. So anyways, it's just, oh, God. 
But our takeaway is still that we're God's partners. Yeah. And we should very much make sure that we are being responsible to Him. That my response is yes to His ability. In Psalm 3, it says, Oh Lord, how my foes have increased. How many rise up against me. Many, stay, many say of me, God will not deliver him. Selah, which means pause and think about that. How many people are talking about you? Oh, God's not going to take care of that. He's not concerned about your issue. Just many people, it says in, the, in, this, in this psalm, it says many people will say, God will not deliver them. But, verse 3, you, O Lord, are my shield around me. Amen. My glory and the one who lifts my head. In other words, I, he's, you're my partner. And because you're my partner, you know, that's everything I need. You're the glory. You're the one that's lifted my head up out of the ashes and out of my sorrow. You're helping me. To the Lord I cry aloud, and he answers me from his holy mountain. Selah. Pause. Think about that. What's that mean? Oh, he looks on the holy mountain. He's above everything else, and he can look down and see where we're at. Verse 5 says, I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear the myriads set against me on every side. Arise, O Lord. Save me, O God. Strike all my enemies in the jaw. Huh? I, I, yeah. <laughs> David saying, strike all my enemies in the jaw. I just want you to understand he's saying for God to do that, not for us to strike our enemies. So just going to give that clarity. He goes on and says, break the teeth of the wicked. In other words, make them so they can't eat anything. Salvation belongs to the Lord. May your blessings be upon your people. Yeah, it's such a beautiful thing. Such a beautiful way to just think about his partnership. And I want us to just picture this as we think of, of that partnership. God wants to be so close to us. He wants to be so close that we walk with him. How did, it, how did he start the whole journey of humans? In the cool of the evening, he would walk with Adam and Eve. He wanted that fellowship. Even after the fall, even after the fall, many generations later, Enoch came around. Enoch was there, and he was the one that he walked faithfully with God. The Bible says that he walked faithfully with God for the rest of his life. Oh, hold on. I, I, I just want you to think about this. He walked faith. You know, they're given the genealogies. This one did this, this. This one lived this many years, had a kid, and lived this many more years, and then died. This one had th lived this many years, had a kid, lived this many more years, and then he died. This one had... Th With Enoch, it says this. He lived this many years, he had a kid, and then it says he walked faithfully with God for the rest of his life. Enoch walked steadily... And then one day, he was simply gone because God took him. Yes. Hello, let that be what we look for for our partnership with God. Yes. Come on, that we're just so in love with him. <coughs> That's Genesis, um, Genesis um, 4, 5. five. It's at the beginning of Genesis, you know, around verse 24. I think it's 6, Genesis 6, I believe. Anyways, Noah also walked with God. He found grace and he found favor in the eyes of the Lord. In spite of all the evil going on around him. Come on, this was the most wicked time in all of creation. Why was it so wicked? Well, it was so bad that God said, no, I'm, I'm wiping everything out. I'm killing everything, even the animals. <laughs> but in spite of all the evil going on around him, Noah was still a good man. A man of integrity in his community. Noah walked with God, the Bible says in, in Genesis 6-9. It says, Noah believed God and built a boat, even though it was not raining. Even though there had never been rain on the earth. Even though there was no water in sight, he still built a boat. That's just when your partner says build a boat. <laughs> okay, what's a boat? Well, here, make it 300 foot long. Okay. 
And just think about that. He had no concept of what a boat was because it's never been rained. He didn't live. He lived in the middle of a desert. They say, build a boat. But he does. Noah did exactly what God told him to do. Lord, help me to be righteous and brave, blameless. Let that be our prayer. In our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds. Walking with you in a close relationship. Lord, help me to do everything that you tell me to do. Why? Because I want to be the best partner that I can be for God. The most important lesson is that we can learn about life is, guess what? We have to start with God. And we have to end with God. And then in between starting with God and ending with God, we need to fill it with God. Yes. That is the most important lesson that we can learn. Yes. So kids, say this with me. I'm going to start with God. And I'm going to end with God. And I'm going to put everything about God in between. Everything about God. Amen. Well, Lord, let that be our cry. Let that be the thing that, that drives us, that we would respond yes to your abilities in our lives. Help us not to look to the right or to the left, but help us to just start with you first and foremost and make sure that we end with you. And everything in between that we're listening to what you're telling us to do. Lord, we do love you. We thank you for today. We thank you that you are working all things out in Jesus' name.